Hey everyone, it's Mark Young. As we get to know God, thank you for tuning in and coming to get to know God with me. Today I got a sermon for you. It is titled, Letting Others' View of Your Past Affect Your Future. Letting Others' View of Your Past Affect Your Future. Today we are at the beautiful Fallon Lake. You can see the beautiful weather. God is good. And so let's pause for a moment of prayer before we begin this sermon. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for an opportunity to come here today and you know, worship you, Lord, and to study your word and get to know you more and to, to be freed from our past, Lord, to, be, to live in the grace that you give us, Lord. You give us grace that overcomes our sin, Lord. That grace comes in the form of your son, Lord. The deeper our sin, the more grace you give us, Lord. So we just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for the beautiful weather you've been giving us. This, we pray that you continue to give us a heart that is seeking you and getting to know you, Lord, getting to know you more. Encourage us and encourage other people, Lord. Help us to not look in our past, but to our future and look in our future, Lord. Don't, don't dwell on them old things. Let us let those things go, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today, so again, the study is called Letting Others' View of Your Past Affect Your Future. So the truth is we all have, we all fall short. We all have a history. We all have a lot of sin we've been living in, a lot of different problems and issues we have in our past, ways we've treated people, the ways we've acted, um, living in the flesh, you know, falling for lust, lustful thoughts, different things. We, we, we all have a history. We're all sinner, sinners. You know, and no one is better than another. And, uh, you know, if you've been able to overcome some sin, some sin that's in your life, you don't get the glory for that. It's because of God. God helped you overcome that. So you can't look back at the next person and say, I'm better than you. There's only reason you are given because God is allowed. God has allowed you to be forgiven. He's allowed you to overcome. And so today I want to encourage you to stop letting others' view of your past affect your future and what God has planned for you. God can and will use you no matter what your past looks like. And so let me say this that it is almost human nature to be a hypocrite. We see everything from our own perspective. I mean, every sin, think about the arguments you get into. We always see it from our own perspective. No matter what the other person says, it's very hard for them to win us over to their side. We always see it from our own perspective. And with that, we always feel judged. We always feel looked down upon by other people. And we feel like those people are so wrong for doing what they're doing, for looking at us, for judging us on our past. Yet a lot of times, we turn and judge. We turn and gossip about other people. Like, so the very thing other people do that affects us in, in the way they judge us about our past, we usually do it ourselves. And so, I want to just give you some a uh, word of encouragement not to judge. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 says, Judge not that you not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say your to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is always a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And so I want to encourage you, just, I want you, don't judge people based on their past. Judge them, look at them, don't judge them at all, but don't look at them the way of their past. Look at them for what they can become. The same way I want people to look at me for who I can be, not who I was. So don't let other people's view of your past affect your future. And don't, don't let your view of someone's past affect their future. Be the one who's different. Be the one to make that change. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Think about that. God forgave you because of grace. Nothing you could do to earn that forgiveness, but he gave it to you. And so likewise, we need to give that to everyone else. We need to put aside all that bitterness, that wrath, that anger, that clamor, evil speaking. Put away with that and move to the future. Leave that in the past. Romans 3, 10 and 11 says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. It doesn't say that there is none righteous except for Mark Younghands. It says there's none righteous. None righteous. No, not one. And so none of us can judge one another. You're not better than someone else. I want, you, I want us to start seeing people for who they can become and not who they were. So even though not one of us deserves to be free from our past through Christ, we have that opportunity. So I challenge you, 
Let go of your past sin. Let go of the old you. Don't hold on to that. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't let that affect your future. Let go of it. Ephesians 4.22 says that you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and the renewed and the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So, as I said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let them old things go. Be renewed. Have that, see the future, what God is doing, what he can do. Be renewed. Let all that go. Don't let other people's view of your past affect you. And, and if you did, let me tell you some biblical stories, some people in the Bible that God used, even though they lived in sin, they had sin. Moses, Moses committed murder. David, he was just the youngest boy in the family, just a small shepherd boy. No one envisioned him doing anything great. People just envisioned him to be this young little follower. And he followed that, he would have never did what he accomplished in life. Peter, you all know the story of Peter. He said, Christ told him that before the end of that day, when Christ was on the cross being crucified, Peter denied Christ three times. And when Jesus actually told him that before he said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows, Peter said, never, never would I do that. And yet Peter denied Christ three times. And that's after he was a disciple of Jesus. That's after he lived with Jesus. He went on like, he seen the work Jesus did firsthand. He seen the people be healed. Yet he still denied Christ when he was up there on the cross. There was God used tax collectors in the Bible who were, who were seen as kind of like evil or sinful back then. God even used people, God used people from every walk of life. People with every sin, history of every single type of lifestyle, God used them. Think about Paul, formerly named Saul. He used to persecute Christians, persecuted everyone that believed in the so-called Son of God. And so, God challenged, God challenged his heart, God actually changed his heart and used him to write 13 books in the New Testament. Now, how did that happen? How did God get his heart? Well, how did that come to be? Listen to what Paul says. Listen to the heart of Paul. In 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 10. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He said, I don't even deserve to be called an apostle. He said, because I persecuted the church of God. Now, but by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace to me was not without effect. So he said that he is who he is because of the grace of God, not because of who he is or how he overcame that old life, but because of that grace that's in him. So the more sin that you're living in, the more grace it takes to overcome. We got a little bit of noise coming. I'll get closer to the bit. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, that's okay. And so by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. So the more sin that you have, the more grace it's gonna take for that to be overcome. And that's what Paul highlights. This wasn't me that made these changes. It's not me that accomplished this work, but God in me. He could have easily lived in his shame of, of his old life, in his, his persecuting Christians. Peter could have lived in the shame of, of, of denying Christ in front of everybody, yet they let go of their past and move to the future. They didn't affect that, let that affect their future. And so the more sin you have, the more grace it takes to, for, to be forgiven, the more beautiful God's love becomes to us. And so you're probably still thinking, God can't use you. Well, who does God use most often? God uses the insecure. Moses said to the Lord, O oh Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant, I am slow to speak. I am slow to speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go and I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. That's Exodus 4, 10 through 12. When Moses said, look, I'm not eloquent. I can't talk. I'm no, I can't do public speaking. I can't make a video. I can't do spoken word and sermons. I can't get on stage. I can't do anything for you, God. He said, God says, look, I'm the one that allows people to do this. I'm the one that gives them their, their gifts and their talents. Let me work in you. I will work in you. I will give you that strength. And he says that to you. He says it to me. 
I don't want to do these videos. I'm afraid to get in front of the camera. I get nervous. We have people walking around. I'm getting nervous saying this, talking about God, proclaiming the name of Jesus in front of people. I get nervous, but it's God speaking through. It's not about me. It's not about what I can do. And so, I also missed the verse I wanted to tell you earlier when we were talking about when we were talking about Paul and what Paul said and how it's God's grace. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So in our weaknesses, in my fear of doing these videos, in my fear of, you know, having a list or a lazy eye or whatever it may be, whatever you lack in, whatever your weaknesses are, God is our strength. God is our strength. So, number two, God uses the unlikely. The first one was God uses the insecure. The second one, God uses the unlikely. Samuel had made this mistake before. As Saul stood among the people, he was a head taller than any of the others. Samuel said to all the people, Do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so we in our flesh, we're, we're so quick to judge people on their past and on their flesh and who they are today. And, and God says, I don't look at none of that. I look at your heart. So where's your heart at? Where's your heart at? Get your heart right. Get your heart right. Don't, don't, don't live in your shame of your past. Move forward. Move forward. Don't let others' view of your past affect your future. They look at the outward. They look at your flesh. But God sees your heart. Now... So he has, okay, you guys probably know the story of, of David and Goliath. So they had asked Jesse, are these all of your sons that you have? And he said, no, there is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. And they said, you know, he's just, he's the youngest boy, just a little guy, the shepherd. They didn't think he had any business fighting Goliath. They didn't think he would ever be a king. Even his own father doubted him. He didn't believe that he was qualified to fight Goliath. Or the king and if you know the story David beat Goliath and Goliath is probably two times his size and just like this and yet he was smarter he let God now David and himself and his flesh would have lost but God through him beat Goliath so another person God used again God uses the unlikely he used David this little boy he also used Jesus he used Jesus Jesus was the unlikely Messiah he was in the world and though the world was made through him the world did not recognize him he came to that which was his own, and by his own did not receive him, but his own did not receive him. Us, the people, the Israelites, did not receive God. They're the ones that persecuted him. They're the ones that, that um, crucified him on the cross. He was not received by his own people. They didn't see him as a likely servant of God that God was using. They didn't see him as the son of God. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and, and, fa and familiar with suffering like one from whom men hid their faces and he was despised and he was esteemed him not. That's Isaiah 53, 2 through 3. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. God used the unlikely, even his own people, the Jews, the Israelites, they didn't, didn't recognize him for who he was. And they, 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 they crucified him. They killed him. It ultimately, it ultimately led to, that, that was God's plan. You know, that was God's plan. And so, but God uses failures. Number three, God uses failures, people who are failures. Going back to the story about Peter. Jesus was being crucified. And Peter was accused of working with Jesus. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. That's Luke 22, 60 through 30. God used Peter, gave him grace and forgiveness. Think about that. He could have lived in that shame. He just rejected Christ. Christ told him he would do this. He said, I would never deny you. And then he still did it after he was already aware that that was to come. And he could have went in shame and, and, and just hid and, and went and killed himself. Yet that's not what he did. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Those who accepted the message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their numbers that day. 
So he could have lived in shame, yet he didn't. He came and he did a great work for God. He commanded, repent and be baptized. Peter repented for his sins. He could have lived in the shame, but no, he, he moved to the future. He knew who, what Jesus seen him as. And so how could Peter preach about forgiveness so passionately? It is because he had been forgiven. Though he just denied Christ, he repented, he was forgiven. And now he, was, he had a heart for God to go and get other people to repent of their sins. So let your past go. Had Peter not let his past go, he would have gave up out of shame and for denying Christ. But he let his past go and didn't let it affect his future. Step out on faith. God can work in you and through you. He has the power, it's not us. We, we will fall short every single day, but through him we can. Watch what happens with Peter when he steps out on faith and when his faith is shaken. So have that faith, trust in God, right? But well, watch this story. This is when um, Peter and them, they were in the boat and Jesus had went off to the mountains. They were in the boat and then, then um, Jesus came. They, at first they were afraid, thinking it was a ghost, but they said, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water towards Jesus. So he walked on top of the water because his faith, because he said, well, Jesus, that's you. Tell me to come to you. So he said, come to me. So he started walking because his faith was strong. He was able to walk on the water because he believed in Jesus. He believed that was him, right? But when he saw the wind, his faith got shaken. A little trouble. Maybe had a little, maybe that's in our life. You know, people, oh yes, Jesus is real. I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh, I just see the trial and tribulation. I lost my job. Uh, my faith's a little shaken. I don't know if Jesus is real. I thought I was doing the right thing. Now I got these negative things coming into my life. I don't know. You start to fall further and further. So listen to this. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And Jesus said, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Think about this. This is Peter, the man who's seen Jesus do a lot of great miracles and works. Yet he denied him, and yet he had, he had lost faith when the wind came. Okay? But he doesn't let that shame muster inside. He lets it go, lets his past go. Live in faith. Don't doubt God's strength. Don't give up. Don't live in shame of your past. God has a plan for you. To tell you, to show you that, listen to this. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork. We, us, are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. Did you catch that? God prepared in advance. He didn't, he's not working right now, going to do it today. He's already thought about it. He's already put it together. He's already prepared in advance a great work that he wants you to accomplish. So don't live in shame of your past. Don't let others condemn you for your past. See yourself as Jesus sees you and move forward because he has a great plan for you. <laughs> as you start to see God, never stop trying to get closer. Don't get complacent. Get to know him more. Don't become self-righteous. Don't think you're on top of the world or you're better than this person or that person or you're, you want to, you have a better ministry than that God or, or I mean, than that, that, that pastor or this person. Don't become proud or boast in your work. Listen to what Paul said, Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. So he said, I have not obtained, I have not reached my goal. I haven't reached the finish line. He says, I, I myself have not apprehended but this one thing I do, so this is something he continually does, it's something I do, he's mentioning something I, I continually do. Forgetting those, things with, forgetting those things which are behind, again this is Philippians 3, 13 and 14, he said I continually forget those things that are behind. He said I forget those the, the things, the, the sins, I forget the old me, I forget the, the way I used to hurt people and hate people, I forget those things, even I forget the accomplishments I have, the things that are in the past I leave back there. I leave them there, right? And he says, and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Even let go of the things, your accomplishments, and reaching forth for those things that are before me. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, let those things in the past stay in the past. I want to end with this. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 20. Therefore, from now on, 
We regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have been passed away. You are now a new creation. Old things leave them in the past. All the things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So God is not holding us bound to the old life. We are reconciled with him through Jesus Christ. And we are now to be the new person that God has planned for us to be. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Don't live in the shame of your past. Don't let others' view of your past affect your future. Don't let them judge you. Christ love you. Live in the glory. The more sin you have, the more glorious the picture is of the grace that he gives you to forgive you of that sin. And you get to move on and live for Jesus Christ. So let him work in your life and through you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you for coming to Get to Know Mark. Young Hands with Get to Know God. It's all about Jesus Christ. Please refer these videos to your friends. Please keep commenting. Let me know that these the sermons are, are helping you. Encourage me as well. I need encouragement. I get discouraged. Sometimes I think about my past. And that's why I let, that's why this, this sermon came, I think, is it, helping me realize I need to let my past go and move forward. I'm not the old Mark that gets angry. I'm not the old Mark with all these lustful desires. I'm not this, this, this person who holds all these grudges and always thinking these revengeful things, how I'm going to get somebody back. But I'm, I'm renewed, a new creation, and today I'm moving forward. So God bless you. Thank you for getting to know God with me. Thank you.